So far, we've seen a number of different hypothesis tests we can run, and each is appropriate for a particular situation. Now, as we go further and learn more hypothesis tests, it won't be easy to lay them out on a single diagram. But for now, I want to give you a little flowchart that might help you understand or pick which hypothesis test makes sense. First, we can ask ourselves how many separate groups or samples we have. If we only have one sample or one group, we simply have to ask ourselves how many scores we have for each subject. If we only have one, we have to know is sigma known? That is, do we know the true population standard deviation? We can always form an estimate based on sample data, but do you know the true population standard deviation? If you do, then you're in a single sample design and the appropriate test is a z-test. On the other hand, if you do not know the population standard deviation, rather if you have to estimate it on the basis of sample data, you're still running a single sample design, but you're going to use that single sample t-test, that is, the test that doesn't require knowledge of the population standard deviation. Now going back to how many scores we have for each subject, if you have more than one, that is you have two, the only test we've seen is that within subjects design, and that uses the dependent samples t-test. Going all the way back to the start, if we don't have just one group, but we have two groups, we have to ask ourselves whether the groups are related, that is, they're matched in some way, are they twins, or are they independent groups, that is, we have totally separate groups of people taking totally separate treatments. Now, if they're independent groups, that's the between subjects design, or an independent samples t-test. If we're in the very special circumstance where we have twins or otherwise matched individuals, well, that's going to be a matched design, and that will also use a dependent samples t-test. Notice that a dependent samples t-test is appropriate any time we have some one-to-one -one connection between observations. When it's the same individual, it's pretty obvious. One individual measured more than once, so the observations for each individual let us form a difference score. With matched individuals, we actually still have a one-to-one -one connection. And again, twin studies are the best way to think of this. One twin serves as the control for the other twin, so we're still going to be able to form different scores, so in essence, we're still performing the same dependent samples t-test.